today we are going to be learning about shepherd and sheep. Shepherd and sheep. Jesus made this most direct statement that he is, rather he said, I am the good shepherd. And in order to set this in context, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to read for you certain verses from this so that in your mind you will be able to picture as to how the original hearers of these words from Jesus in this discourse would have absorbed the information that he was saying. The way that they would have understood when Jesus stood amongst them and said, I am the good shepherd. And this goes back to um, 550, 560 BC when Ezekiel was living during the time of the Israelites who were in exile, meaning they were in Babylon, they were under judgment. So they were in exile. And during that time, he is saying these things to the Israelites. Sovereign Lord, verse 2. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, or healed the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. Verse 9, or the verse 10. Verse 9 and 10. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. Verse 11. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. Verse 14, I will tend them in a good pasture on, on the mountain, mountain heights of Israel. And there they will feed in a rich pasture. Verse 15, I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down. Verse 16, I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Verse 20. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Verse 23. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Verse 31. You, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, are people, and I am your God, declares the sovereign Lord. Please pray with me. Father, we thank you for your living and enduring word. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We come to you, Lord. May the words that you want to be said alone be said this morning. Give us ears, ears to listen to what the Spirit of the Lord wants to speak to each and every one of us today. Bless us with your presence. You are the bread of life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I pray that you will speak. I bring every thought captivity and obedience to Jesus Christ right now. Every thought. 
speak, Lord, and we will listen. In Jesus' name, amen. You see what's happening in Ezekiel right here? Ezekiel, in fact, is castigating the false teachers or the false leaders or the leaders of Israel at that time. Telling them, you guys are indulging in yourselves and you're not taking care of the people. You are building million dollar homes. You have your own jets. You want to fly all around. You want to do this stuff. Do you really care for my people? Are you interested in them? No. He's castigating them and saying, you are not. I'm going to judge you. But at the same time, he does not leave them there. Ezekiel is promising. God is speaking through Ezekiel and promising, because you guys are like this, because you're doing this, you know what? I myself will take care of my people. I will tend my sheep. I will prepare my shepherd. He's talking about David. You may wonder, yes, David was a shepherd. You know in the Bible you see uh, Abel, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, David, all of these patriarchs were shepherds. He's talking about, I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. Is he talking about King David who was a shepherd? We all know who he's talking about. He's in fact prophesying right here through the mouth of Ezekiel. God is telling, you know how Jesus is referred to as the son of David? Right here he's saying, this is going to be Jesus. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. Right here he's proclaimed years ago to them. Because you have not done your work, I have already prepared, I've already planned. There is going to come one shepherd who's going to take care of my people. So this is, this is what the people have heard. So in this context, now turn with me to the book of Gospel according to John, chapter 10. John chapter 10. I put in verses 1 through 33 in the notes, but we're not going to be looking at all the verses because when we're talking about the good shepherd, you should always hold it in tension with, I am the door or the gate of the sheep that you heard last week. The fact that Jesus is the door of the sheep. He is the gate. He is a safe door. He is a secure door. He is a special door. And after he has said all of that, he is saying in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So when the people are hearing right now, they know what's happened in the past. And the moment Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, they know that the prophecy of Ezekiel is now being fulfilled. God, in his omnipotence, in his divine plan, he has sent out the great shepherd of the sheep. He has sent out the shepherd, Jesus Christ. This is a great picture or an imagery or a figure of speech to understand our relationship with the Lord. You know, there are many images, pictures in the Bible, and this one is very prominent. The shepherd and the sheep. And you may have heard preachers or teachers telling you, you know why God and Jesus calls you the sheep? Because sheep are dumb. You people are dumb. You know, they are absolutely directionless. They flock together. If one sheep goes and falls down the cliff, all the other sheep go and fall down the cliff. They can't think for themselves. They are defenseless. They do not fight. They do not take flight. They cannot run. When an enemy comes in, they all run in circles. They say it's a free snack for the wild nature. Wild nature. Once somebody comes in. You mind, why did God call us sheep? And he called himself shepherd. Why couldn't he have called us? We are lions. He calls himself a lion, roaring lion. But do you know he calls even the devil the roaring lion? The devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Let me place this for you. As much as you think, are we dumb? No, we are not dumb. Let me take the thoughts of Puritan Thomas Watson who said, there are certain reasons why, why God particularly chose the sheep. 
And that is, sheep are very innocent. They are very meek. They are clean animals. They are useful with their wool, with their hair, with their meat, of course. Very good, tasty, if you cook it well. And then with the content, and they are also timorous, meaning they are fearful. So what the reason why Jesus is calling us sheep is, he is only trying to tell us, I would believe all the, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that the nature or the attributes of these animals, of this particular animal, is something we all possess. And you know, I'm, I'm not a sheep expert, but uh, I've, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. These days you can't trust what comes through the internet, but I do not know whether this is true, but it could be. But people have researched, and they say these things about sheep. And I'm sure we all can resonate with this. You can find, check out whether you have the same nature, okay? Sheep are very inde independent. Though they look like they flock together, they lack the ability to, lie, to act independently. It's a lie. It says they all get into different activities. They do whatever they like at that particular time. Then, sheep get jealous of each other. They headbutt each other. They bite, hoof stomp, etc. I don't know whether we are jealous people. Sheep love cuddles. They love cuddles. Sheep come running when you call their name. Sheep remember people. If you start training them, you have them as a pet, they remember you. This is very interesting. Sheep carry emotional baggage. If they've been mistreated, it can take years and sometimes even a lifetime to tr truly heal from their traumatic experiences. This tells us that they're not dumb animals. They do not just simply forget the horrible things that have happened to them in the past. Sheep grieve for their loved ones. Sheep love to sunbathe. If you go to the beach, you can see it. Sheep self-medicate. When a sheep is sick, they often know exactly what they need to, need to cure themselves. And people who don't have insurance, we do that. We self-medicate. Okay? So, people are exhibiting the attribute or the nature of a sheep. That is why he uses this particular image for us to understand and say that we are sheep. So, there are three shepherd titles that Warren Wearsby notes in the scripture. If you and I had actually, if you read the scripture, we ourselves can note this, but unfortunately we don't, but we have these theologians who go in and are very good in finding out what uh, is said about the shepherd and the sheep. So the three titles, we all are very, very, I mean, uh, aware of this. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Jesus is our good shepherd. The second title that we sometimes do not remember is, Jesus is our great shepherd. And that's found in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 through 21. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. May he work in us everything pleasing to him. May he equip us, equip in us everything that is according to his will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, writes the person who wrote the book of Hebrews. He is the great shepherd of our sheep who equips us with everything good for doing his will. He equips us for doing his will and to be pleasing to him. The third title, Jesus is our chief shepherd. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, it talks about, To the elders among you I appear as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings, and one who also will share in the glory to be re revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. 
Jesus is referred to as the chief shepherd. And in the New Testament, the word shepherd is used to denote pastors. Pastors or leaders. So you may say, okay, it's only for pastors. So pastor, you better uh, follow all of those things. It's not for us. But let me now propose to you that each and every one of you here in your own right are or is or going to be a shepherd or a leader. In this sense, a father or a mother or a teacher in school or if you are leading a group in your company, you are a project leader, you are heading a particular organization, you are a leader, you are leading a group of people. Shepherd and sheep. Shepherd is a leader. Sheep is supposed to follow the leader. So in any context you look, there has to be a leader who will lead the people, lead the flock. So that is why here you see Peter's writing to shepherds and overseers are saying, you are a shepherd of the people, but remember there is a chief shepherd. When he comes, you will receive the crown of glory. That is for you. If you do your job well, you will receive the crown of glory. If you take care of the people under your portfolio, under your care, so wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whichever organization you're working with, there are a few people that you can influence, you can lead. So it, it applies to each and every one of us. Jesus is our good shepherd, he's a great shepherd, he's our chief shepherd. Now let's look at the qualities of the shepherd. What are the, some of the qualities of the shepherd? Number one, chapter 10, verse 11. Chapter 10, verse 4. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. In the Middle Eastern context, in Middle, Middle East, when the shepherd leads the sheep, he doesn't walk at the back. He doesn't herd the animals going up, go, go in front, go in front, I'm following you. No. He actually leads from the front, and the sheep follow him. He leads from the front because he is providing direction. He is providing a particular way. He can lead to a particular path that he knows what is best. He leads from the front. So our chief, our great, our good shepherd leads from the front. Do we really allow him to lead us from the front? Just last year, that was when um, my seven-year-old daughter learned to drive, uh, to ride a bike. So she was very excited. She started riding her bike in the complex. We were just riding in the sidewalks. And then one day we both wanted to uh, ride the bike. So I, had, I was riding on the bigger one, and she was riding on the smaller one, on the one that she wanted to. So she was, as she was try, riding, she said, OK, Dad, I want you to lead. I said, OK, I will lead. And then I started riding. And as I was riding, and I was making some turns here, and they said, no, don't go there. You turn this side. Turn right. I don't want you to go there. And then again, still going further. I said, no, turn turn this way. Turn this way. I don't want you to go further. I do not want you to go in that direction. I want you to turn left. Turn right. I got annoyed. I said, you said that I'm supposed to lead. If I'm supposed to lead, you follow me. I get to say where I want to go or what I want to do. I had to give a serious talking to a stop, gave her the instructions. I said, if you say I'm leading, I am the leader. I'll, I decide where to go. You don't tell me. And wherever I go, you have to follow me. And then she said, OK. And now it's like six, seven months. And any time we get on together, we want to write, she said, you lead. I will follow. And what we have done is, I have given her opportunities, and I said, okay, now I want you to be the leader. You go wherever you want, I will follow you. So in this, in this context of leading and following, 
you are leading a group of people, but you're not at the top. We are always following the good shepherd, that is Jesus. Whichever role that you may be in, you have one over you. He is the good shepherd, and you take instructions from him, you will be in good shape. So Jesus leads from the front. Second quality of the shepherd is, he knows and cares for the sheep. Chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. This is what it says. The watchman opens a gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He cares for the sheep. He knows the sheep. And then verse uh, 2, you can see that there. In verse 2 it says, The man who enters by the gate is a shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him. The sheep listens to his voice. And go, going down it says, the hired, Read verse 12 with me. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I care for the sheep, Jesus says. I am not the hired hand. I am the good shepherd. I know, I know my sheep. I know my sheep by name. And I care for the sheep. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, it is said, the foundation of our faith is Christ. The Lord knows those who are his. Everyone who confesses on the name of the Lord must depart from wickedness. Everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. The Lord knows those who are his. My question today is, does the Lord really know you? He knows those who are his. And he takes care of them. Complete care of them. Unlike the hired hand who will run away. He takes care of them. He knows and cares for the sheep. We, we sang the beautiful song, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for my name's sake. He will guide you in the path of righteousness, not to do wrong. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Valley of the shadow of death. It's not death. Shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why you will fear no evil? Because you are with me. He is with you. Because when you pass from this life to that life through the shadow of death, you are not being separated. You are with him always. You are in his presence. The blessing of the promise of eternal security, eternal life is given right there for you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And before that, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod and thy staff. Rod is used to correct, to discipline. He uses the rod to correct and discipline. You know how he sometimes cares for us? Psalmist David writes, Psalm 119, he says, it was good for me to be afflicted. Now I obey your word. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have now I obey your word. I have learned your decree. Affliction is to bring us back into the fold. Affliction, either through the body or through the circumstances or through whatever you face, it's to bring us back into the fold. Not always. It's, sometimes it's very direct. Sometimes it is to teach us. It is to learn. Because sheep are prone to wander. They're wandering animals. 
And that is why he said he compares us to sheep because many times we wander away from the Lord. A hymn writer wrote it like this, prone to wander, the God I love. Prone to leave the God I love. So here's my heart. Take and seal it. Seal it for the courts above. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. So here's my heart. Take and seal it. Seal it for the courts above. We all have a wandering heart. Is your heart wandering today? Would you want to come back into that fold? He cares for the sheep. Thirdly, he sacrifices his life for the sheep. It's very clear as you read verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Verses, verse 15, again he, say, he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as a father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. You know how God knows you? He says, he's making the comparison, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. The intimate relationship of the Trinitarian God that we believe in, God the Father, God the Son, how much they know each other. In John chapter 5, he talks about how he knows the Father. He says, my Father is always working. I see him working, and whatever he does, that's what I do. I don't do anything else. I see my father working, and whatever he does, that's what I do. Whatever the father does, that's what I do. And that's how intimate the father and son are. And he's saying he knows us that intimately. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I know you, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And in verse 16 he says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. This is where he's talking about the Gentiles who are going to be brought into the kingdom of God. Because he's speaking to a Jewish audience, remember. And they all think they own Jesus. None of us own Jesus. Let me tell you the people who died in Orlando. Jesus owns them. They belong to him too. None of us own Jesus. He is for all people. No matter what they may be doing, he loves them. He wants them. He died for them. He's God. He's Jesus is for everyone. But whether you're going to be entering into this fold is the question. He sacrifices his life for the sheep. And if you read in Psalm 22, verse 1 and 2, you will see how a reflection of that is seen where in the psalmist says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why are you so silent? You're not listening to my cry. That's the same cry that Jesus said on the cross when he was dying. He used Psalm 22 to reflect the fact that he was the shepherd. And remember, it's Though he says, I am the good shepherd, you know how wonderfully he identifies himself with us? John, when he first saw him, John the Baptist, when he first saw him, as Jesus was walking towards him, you know what did he say? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He referred to Jesus as the Lamb of God. We are sheep, we are lamb. He becomes one of us. We should have died on the cross. But he was the lamb who was sacrificed for us. Once and for all. He is our sacrifice. Okay, what are the qualities of the sheep? I just have three for you. John chapter 10, verse 14 through 15. It says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. They know the shepherd. Do you know the shepherd? Many times in this situation that we are in, we think we know about Jesus. Do you really intimately know him? 
Do you know your shepherd intimately? Do you know Jesus, how he guides, how he talks? Do you have a relationship in which he communes with you? Do you know that he's a father who's always available for you, no matter what happens? You can go to him anytime, and he's revealed to reveal himself to us. Do you really know the shepherd? We all know the president of America. You know his name. But do you really know him? We don't. Many of us are in that level where we know Jesus at that level, but we do not know him in intimacy. You know how he guides his sheep? He walks them through quiet water sometimes. He restores their soul. But sometimes he takes them through the valley of the shadow of death. He leads them through a valley, a difficult terrain that you have to walk through. But there's only one promise, one guarantee, that he is always with you. His presence is always with you. No matter what afflictions may come your way, he is the shepherd who walks you through that affliction, who walks you through that pain. He says, cast your burden on the Lord, for he cares for you. Because he's a shepherd who cares. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. He's a shepherd who cares. Do you really know the shepherd? Second, the quality of a sheep is it recognizes the shepherd's voice. Verse 4 and 5. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Have you learned to distinguish a stranger's voice and the shepherd's voice? Or are you like this? Uh, I'm sure you, you all have watched this show, The Voice, on TV. You know where the voice, there are people who sing, and then the judges, they don't face the people who sing, they face the audience, and they sit down. And then when the people sing, suddenly when they hear the voice, they like the voice, Boom! They press the button, they turn, and they look at them. They give the approval. We are many times like that. As long as we like what we hear, we turn, yes, Lord, I'll do this. The moment we don't like what he's telling us to do, no, no, turn, no, I don't want to do that. I'm not approving of what you're telling me to do. I don't want to do it. Do you recognize the shepherd's voice? He's speaking always. Always he's at work. He's speaking. But are you listening? Have you learned to distinguish? Tune in to the frequency. There's so much of noise in this world out here today. So much of noise. Have you learned to quieten your spirit daily? To sit at his feet. He has revealed himself through his word. Are you able to understand what the word of God is telling you? It's very, very clear. There's nothing more that needs to be revealed to us. Are you willing to receive this voice that the Lord has already given to us? Unless you train your mind to program it with the scriptures, with the voice of God, there is no way we are going to be acting according to the ways of God. How do you program your mind? It's by reading and spending time with him. Do you recognize his voice? Thirdly, if you really recognize your voice, his voice, you follow the shepherd. You follow the shepherd. It says, the sheep, the moment they hear the stranger's voice, they know that they cannot go there. They follow the shepherd. They've trained themselves to listen to the shepherd. Have you trained yourself to follow the shepherd? And what is your training? How, how are you going to follow the shepherd? And that is found 
in 1 Peter chapter 2, 21 through 25. And you're asking me, and you should ask me, what should I follow? What is my calling in life? 1 Peter chapter 2. And if you are questioning what is that you're being called to, you know there is a specific calling, there is a common calling for every believer. We are all called. But there are specific callings in the sense that different roles that God gives in the body of Christ. But there is a common call to every believer. And what is that call? Including me. This is the call. Verse 21. To this you were called. What is this? Because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. The good shepherd. Following the good shepherd. Follow in his steps. This is what it says. This is what Peter writes. He committed no sin. A pure life. A clean life. And no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray. You are a sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. We all like that passage in chapter uh, Isaiah chapter 53 where it talks about by his wounds we are healed. But right after that it says, verse 6, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. And listen to this. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. The servant king, Jesus. This is the example that you and I are to follow. Are you willing to follow the shepherd wherever he may lead you? Are you willing to follow him? Because if you follow him, and if you know your shepherd's voice, you know the shepherd, you recognize his voice and you follow him, this is what happens. He provides for you eternal security. And he says, no one can snatch you out of his hand. No one can snatch you out of the Father's hand. You are hidden in Christ in God. Are you willing to follow wherever the shepherd leads you? Be it in a quiet pasture. Be it on a rough terrain. Be it in a valley. He is giving you the promise. I will be with you. I have laid down my life already for you. I was a lamb who was slain before the foundations of the world as a sacrifice for you. Are you willing to follow me? Are you willing to follow me? Wherever I may lead you. Let's pray. As you pray, I want you to just reflect on what you just heard. Would you be able to say, along with the writer of the song, Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. 
Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream. The shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep, the shepherd of my soul will be my guide. Shepherd of my soul, you have made me whole. Wherever I hear you call, how my tears flow, how I feel your love, how I want to serve, I gladly give my heart. Be it in the flowing river or in the quiet night, should I face the stormy weather or the dangers of the world, the shepherd of my soul will be my guide. Would you give him full control today? Would you tell him, I give my life this morning to you, Lord, yet again, to listen to your voice. If there's one thing that I want to ask each and every one of us, if we do not listen to the Father's voice, we will not know where to go, what to do. Would you make that resolve today, that decision this afternoon to say, Father, I choose to listen to your voice and to follow you. Whatever you tell me to do in your word, whatever it is, I'm willing to follow you, Lord. I'm going to take my Bible every day and listen to that voice. I'm going to spend time with you, listening to your voice, to ask you to speak to me, to direct my path. I'm not satisfied with what, with the life that I'm currently living. I want to serve kingdom purposes. I want to be in your perfect will. So, shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. If you are that person today saying, Lord, I have strayed away from you, but I'm coming back today. And I'm making a decision to listen to your voice daily. Daily listening to your voice. Shutting out every other thing, shutting out every other voice. Will you help me, Lord? Would you ask your shepherd to help you to do that? And if you're that person, I want you to stand. And sing this song along with everybody. As a prayer, as a song of commitment. That you're making a decision today. To listen to your father's voice and to follow him wherever he may lead you. If you're that person, I want you to stand wherever you are. And make this your prayer. Make this your prayer today. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. I will follow you.